You. Yes, you. Complete 5,000 likes and write your darkest and deepest wish in the comment, and I will fulfill any one of them. Now let's begin the video. Yumiela is an loser shut-in gamer who reincarnated into the hidden boss of the game she was playing, destined to die by the hands of the hero. However, using her game knowledge, she decided to become so strong that not even God would lay a hand on her and live a peaceful life. Well, it all started when she was five years old. Suddenly, her past life memories flooded into her. She was a high schooler in Japan, a disgusted shut-in gamer. She was returning from her college when a divine transporter truck killed her. And here she is. Then, laying on her bed, she thought, this is the destiny of the previous Yumiela, not her. With a smirking smile, she said she will level up and become so strong using her gaming knowledge that not even God will be able to kill her. And then she can live a peaceful life. Then, excited, Yumiela sneaked from her castle to level up. She spotted a green slime. And with a serious face, she activated her dark magic for the first time. And the slime died instantly. She herself got shocked a little after that. The slime dropped a magic stone, and Yumiela decided to sell this mana stone for money. Then she started to practice martial arts that she learned back on Earth, and she began to feel that she was already much stronger than when she was on Earth because she leveled up. Seeing this, she got excited, thinking of leveling up more. As she was a pro gamer, the inner gamer kicked in, and she started sneaking from her castle every day, immersing herself in leveling up by killing various monsters from the forest. The magic stones that she obtained by selling them made quite a good amount of money. With this money, and her knowledge of good items from playing the game, she bought all the good items. First, she bought the Amulet of Growth. Wearing this would allow her to level up much faster. Then, after a year, she entered the hidden dungeon where high-level dark monsters live. Normally, one has to form a party and then enter this dungeon, but she learned recovery magic and can even regenerate her arm if needed. She thought this dungeon would be hard, but, well, she cleared and conquered this dungeon without breaking a sweat and obtained a good amount of magic stones. After that, she used the monster summoning flute she got after clearing the dungeon and then started to slaughter the monsters that she summoned. She repeated this day after day, and as her level increased, so did the level of the monsters she summoned. Finally, when she reached the age of 15, she arrived at the Royal Magic Academy. Seeing the Academy up close, she still couldn't believe she reincarnated into the game world she used to play. Then, as she reached her dorm, she opened the letter her parents sent her. Her parents instructed her to get engaged to as high-level noblemen as she can find. The noblemen don't need to be the eldest sons, just any high-level nobles will do. Seeing this, she couldn't believe this was her first interaction with her parents, but she had no intention of getting married. She just wanted to live her life peacefully. Well, in this world, black hair is ultra-rare and treated as bad luck. So her parents abandoned her. Even her maid glared at her with disgusting eyes. That is why she lives alone from a young age. The next morning before the entrance ceremony, we go back one day before here. Here we meet Alicia, one of the main heroes of the story. She was on her way to the academy when she saw an injured lady. She helped her reach home and even healed her. But in the process, she got late. As she reached the school, the school gate was already closing, and then we meet this cocky guy, Oswald. The self-proclaiming, overconfident genius mage and a man who follows rules, so he didn't allow Alicia to enter as the clock hit six o'clock. But after getting rizzed by Alicia's cute smile, Oswald set her to enter the academy by the broken wall on the west. Alicia thanked Oswald with a warm smile, which melted Oswald's dick. Shit, I meant to say heart. As Alicia reached the broken wall, we meet this dickhead, William. He offers his hand to pull her up, assuming she also broke the curfew. After successfully entering the academy, the boy introduces himself as William Ares and explains that he had to go out to buy drinks for the seniors preparing a party. While walking, William warned Alicia to be careful not to fall, but he only ends up falling from the window of the roof. Alicia tried to save him, but the two end up falling inside the school. Alicia noticed she doesn't feel any pain. This was because she fell on the little PP of this piece of shit, Edwin II, Prince of the Kingdom. Then the yellow-haired boy asked who she is, and Alicia introduced herself as a first-year student. Then William jokingly asked how his little buddy was doing. Seeing this, Alicia asked if they are both friends, and William replied that they are childhood friends. Then the yellow-haired boy stands up and introduces himself as Edwin, the second prince of the Valshine Kingdom. Upon encountering a prince, Alicia is even more astonished. After that, they go to the principal's office and he comments that the two are causing quite a commotion. William says it was her fault since he only fell because he was distracted talking to Alicia. 
Then Alicia starts arguing with him. The principal tells them both to be quiet and says he will confiscate William's purchases. Regarding Alicia, the principal comments that she has a rare talent for light magic, which is why she was the only commoner admitted to the academy with a scholarship. Still, he orders her to behave and take care of her conduct from now on. He punishes them both, making them do extra tasks for a week. Afterward, they leave the office, and the principal thought Alicia is a kind soul and is the only hope of defeating the demon lord who will awaken in two years. Meanwhile, Alicia was sitting in her dorm sad because she screwed up her first day. The next day, during the ceremony, Alicia, while greeting everyone, bumped into someone. As she looked up, she was terrified, as if she had seen a demon lord with a terrifying aura. Well, it was none other than Yumiela. After that, Alicia just said sorry and scared and panicked, left for her seat. The vice principal then started his speech, and now we are back to where we started. The vice principal continued to give his speech, but Yumiela noticed everyone just glaring at her. Then she realized this might be because of her black hair, as black hair represents darkness and demons in this world. Well, she didn't care. Then the vice principal announced that now they would check everyone's level, and a mage brought a level-checking crystal. Now hearing this, Yumiela got a little nervous, as she didn't know what her level was, as nothing like a game screen appeared in front of her. Then Alicia placed her hand on the crystal, and her level turned out to be level 1. After that, William's level turned out to be level 10, and he was really happy about it. Everyone started to clap and got amazed. Yumiela, on the other hand, thought that if she didn't have to stand out, she hoped her level would be around level 5. But then she remembered there was no way her level was only 5 after she had slaughtered the monster countless times. Finally, it was Yumiela's turn. She just stood beside the magic crystal silently. The headmaster said to Yumiela not to be nervous, as even if her level is 1, there is nothing to be embarrassed about when one is starting at school. Yumiela, on the other hand, was nervous about getting her level too high, not level 1. She slowly placed her hand, praying her level not to be too high. Well, the crystal displayed level 99, and seeing this, everyone got bewildered and shocked like they had seen a ghost. The highest level in the kingdom was only level 60, so 99 was out of this world. Yumiela knew she was fucked up. Everyone, on the other hand, was just too shocked and started to doubt if she is cheating. Yumiela herself didn't realize she had reached level 99. After that, the headmaster said it must be an error and instructed for another magic crystal. But well, once again, her level turned out to be level 99, shocking everyone. Surprised, Tsunade teacher asked Yumiela if she knew her level was 99, and she knew she fucked up big time. She couldn't hide her power anymore, so she decided to reveal it, saying she knew. Then the swordsman teacher said the magic crystal is working, and there is no way she is level 99, so it means she cheated somehow. But Yumiela insisted she didn't cheat, and her level is indeed 99. The sword teacher got angry, shouting and asking if she might not know that one has to kill monsters to level up, and level 99 means she's been killing monsters since she was a kid. But Yumiela had indeed been killing monsters from when she was a child. Everyone started gossiping and started to doubt if she is cheating then. The headmaster clapped to break the tension, asking everyone to calm down. He said they would find out if she's lying or not in actual classes, and gave her a doubtful glare before asking Yumiela to introduce herself to everyone. Then Yumiela Ella introduced herself to the school, thinking that even the headmaster doubted her. If things get worse, she can just flee to another country and live an ordinary life. Then the level measuring continued, and Yumiela thought in the actual story, Alicia was the one to get everyone's attention because she was a commoner, so she apologized in her mind for that. Then the freshman party began, and Yumiela, being an introverted shut-in gamer, found it too much for her, so she decided to go to her room. As she was going, William stopped her angrily, asking her how she cheated and manipulated her level. Seeing him, Yumiela thought she now had to deal with this pain in her ass because this guy is a muscle head. He continued, saying everyone wants to stand out, but how can she cheat as a noble? Then from behind, Edwin came with an annoyed glare, saying he knows how William is feeling, but this is not the place for making a fuss. Seeing him, Yumiela first bowed and greeted him because he is a prince. But the prince, with a disgusting glare, said, Yumiela, a central wannabe, which startled her. Then he explained that William had been putting more effort than anyone he knew from childhood, and that's how he reached level 10. Because she cheated, it tramples all of William's hard work. Meanwhile, Yumiela was confused. Why does everyone think she cheated? She replied that she is level 99, and everyone will know if she is a liar or not when class starts. Then another man, Oswald, said she is still continuing her lie. 
Now Yumiela was just annoyed. She wanted to avoid contact with the main characters to live an ordinary life here. Yumiela said nothing she says will convince them, and Oswald, smirkingly, said that if she wanted to lie, she should have gone for level 10 or 15, but 99 was just too absurd. Then Edward, bullying, said, why doesn't she show her level 99 power? She thought, even if she used 1% of her power, their asses would get fucked up, and she wanted to live an ordinary life. So she distracted them by saying, that commoner girl Alicia seems lost in the party, and they should help her. When they were distracted, she ran. Finally, at home, Yumiela was exhausted from all the fuss. Her maid asked her why she had returned. The party was not over yet. Yumiela explained that there was no person she was interested in. The maid, named Rita, was also sent by her father to ensure that she got engaged with some noble. Rita explained that the second prince was also in her class. And Yumiela would never find a good partner if she continued to behave like a shut-in loser. At this point, Yumiela was too annoyed and to change the topic. She asked what a central wannabe was, and Rita, a little startled, said someone must have told her, but it was nothing to be worried about. Yumiela replied that she hadn't said someone told her, implying that it was a term only applicable to her and her family. Without any choice, Rita explained what it meant, saying her family was a good-for-nothing noble family. They left the management of their territory entirely to the local government while they partied and indulged in vices. Yumiela found her own family quite despicable, and Rita had nothing to say in response. The next day at school, Yumiela was sitting alone in the corner, and her classmates started to gossip about her, calling her hair black and cursed. They accused her of cheating to have a level 99, but Yumiela heard everything because of her heightened senses skill, and she didn't give a shit what others thought. However, she noticed that the boys, including Alicia, entered the class together, which was surprising because in the original story, they didn't get along so well at the start. She wondered if her presence was causing a butterfly effect. Then, out of nowhere, Alicia glared at Yumiela with hostility. Seeing this, Yumiela decided not to interact with the main characters as much as possible to live an ordinary life. In the afternoon swordsmanship practice class, Yumiela was very happy to hold a real sword made of wood. She always wanted to hold a real sword, just like the game she used to play. Then the sword teacher announced that he would start a mock battle between the so-called Level 99 students and asked who wanted to spar. Yumiela was once again annoyed as everyone was targeting her. And to top it off, the musclehead William came confidently and said he would be her sparring opponent. Seeing this, everyone started to cheer for William. Yumiela, on the other hand, was in trouble, thinking about how she should hold back so that she didn't accidentally hurt him. She usually used magic to kill monsters, but the one time she used her physical force, she instantly smashed a monster. As she was busy thinking, William taunted her, saying now is the time to quit pretending and referring to her as a fraud. Yumiela was annoyed, thinking that his survival depended on how well she could control her power, and he was making her more annoyed with the teacher's command. The battle sparing began, but everyone started to laugh when they saw Yumiela's battle position. She explained that this was her first time holding a sword, and they could begin like this. This got William angry, thinking that Yumiela was making a joke of him. He charged toward her, but his dash was too slow for Yumiela. She simply backed off, off-balanced William with her sword, and he fell on his face. Seeing this, Yumiela felt sorry for him, as she didn't think he would take such a dramatic fall. Then she asked if she had to hit him to be victorious, and the teacher, startled, announced her victory. William got mad, saying he couldn't believe she acted like a noob to catch him off guard. With that, he attacked Yumiela once again, but she just slightly flicked William's sword and he flew back miles away as if there was no gravity shocking everyone. Worried, Yumiela went to check if she had accidentally killed him or if he was alive. To her relief, he was alive. Then she grabbed him by his collar, asking if she had to carry him to the nurse's office. The teacher panicked, took William, and instructed everyone not to spar with Yumiela. They were also instructed her to just do swinging practice. At this point, everyone was terrified of her, so she decided to practice swinging. She did a normal swing, but it created a large wind pressure, knocking everyone back. The next class was magic practice, and the Sunate teacher greeted everyone with a warm smile and explained that they just had to hit the magic-enhanced dummy. One by one, everyone started to do it. Yumiela explained that in this world, there are four types of elements. Fire, water, wind, and earth. Rarely, there are light elements like Alicia's and dark elements. Seeing Alicia using light magic surprised everyone as it's an ultra-rare element. Then it was the magic prodigy Oswald's turn, and one by one, he used all four elements. Lady Tsunade praised him, saying she expected no less from the genuine Oswald. 
She was amazed because he mastered all the elements. Then he said it was Yumiela's turn to show her level 99 power. She, on the other hand, thought he was not in the previous class, so he didn't know he kicked William's sweet ass. As she reached the target, she explained that she couldn't use the four elements properly, but she was a girl who maxed all her stats and was an expert dark mage. Then she asked Sunad if there would be a problem if she destroyed the target. Overconfident Oswald explained that the target could even withstand a palace mage, so it couldn't be scratched by a fraud. But Tsunade, to calm the situation, said not to worry, nothing would happen. Yumiela raised her hand and used dark flame, and a puny little flame came from her hand. Seeing this, Oswald laughed, saying, What trash magic is this? But Tsunade was shocked. Then, as soon as the puny flame touched the target, it started to melt down, shocking everyone. Yumiela explained that it might look like fire, but it's not warm and it melts the target like acid. Well, it's a combination of Amaterasu and Hakai Ball. Seeing this, everyone got terrified because she used Dark Flame to calm the situation. Tsunade, the teacher, came forward, explaining that a Dark Mage is not evil, as even in the King's Palace. There were some Dark Mages. It is just a type of element like light. But Oswald, well, his little pride got crushed. He believed he was a magic prodigy and couldn't accept someone more powerful than him, so like a baby, he ran off crying, surprising Tsunade, the teacher. Just then, Edwin came with the principal, showing her expulsion papers. She realized that's why she didn't see him earlier because he was busy doing this. The principal added coldly that those who lie about their level are not fit for this academy. Hearing this, Yumiela said it was better for her as she could now go to another country and attend another academy. The Tsunade teacher, hearing this, started to beg the teacher to wait, explaining that Yumiela is a rare dark mage. She destroyed a target that even a palace mage had difficulty breaking, so she might really be a level 99, and her expulsion would be a huge loss for the kingdom. But that goddamn principle explained that a palace mage breaking something doesn't prove she is a level 99, so she has to prove she is level 99. Tsunade, worried, said to Yumiela that she knows she didn't use her full power, so can she please show a more powerful spell to prove she is right? It was hard for Yumiela to refuse, seeing Tsunade beg like this, so she decided to show them a good show. She asked Edwin if she could shoot her spell into the sky, and if something happens, he has to take responsibility. Edwin, annoyed, said what can happen and he will take full responsibility. Then Yumiela decided to use one of the strongest spells that only a demon lord can use, but using only 1% of her power. She raised her hand, and a black hole appeared in the sky. Slowly, the hole started to grow bigger and bigger, eventually covering the entire capital city. Then it started to suck everything in. The entire capital city was in chaos, and Yumiela explained that this is a spell that sucks everything around it. In other words, the entire air. The sky above the academy would vanish in an instant, so she deactivated her spell before it swallowed the entire capital. Now at this point, everyone was just too shocked, surprised, and bewildered. Yumiela, with a creepy smile, came close to Edwin, asking if her spell was good enough to prove she is a level 99 and he was just too shocked to even talk, terrified and shaking. After that, she got summoned to meet the king at the capital. As she entered the castle, everyone started to stare at her, whispering and bad-mouthing, saying, is she really level 99? Her hair is black. Is she cursed? And she is very creepy. But she didn't give a care and bowed her head toward the king. The king told her to raise her head and explain that he knew what happened at the academy. He said he would properly scold his son and the principal and he apologized, bowing his head. Seeing this, everyone got shocked and Yumiela also bowed her head, explaining that it was not their fault. It was just a misunderstanding and she just caused trouble wherever she goes. But the king said it was their fault and no one can say anything to one level without testing it. However, it is true that it is hard to believe that such a delicate lady is level 99. So to clear the suspicions, the king called Adolf, the strongest knight of the kingdom. He would decide if she is actually level 99 or not. Yumiela explained that Adolf is the only level 60 in the kingdom, and considering one has to be level 60 to defeat the demon lord, even she felt he was strong. Suddenly, without any warning, he charged at Yumiela, surprising her. As he was charging, Yumiela was thinking about what to do. She couldn't counterattack and injure the strongest man in the kingdom, so she swiftly bowed down, dodging the attack, 
which shocked everyone. Adolf took his stance down, saying there is no one who can match his speed and dodge his attack, and she had the time to think about what to do and dodged while bowing. He believed she is really level 99. Adolf then apologized for the sudden attack and left, and the king also praised Yumiela and asked her if she could show her magic. She agreed and activated her skill, and multiple spikes emerged from the ground, shocking everyone once again. Everyone started to whisper that she is cursed because she used and had a sinister aura. Seeing this, the king asked the head palace mage if dark mages are evil. The head palace mage explained that dark magic is just an element like the four element. It is just ultra rare, like light magic. Dark magic is weak against light but strong against all four basic elements. Whether it possesses a threat or not depends on the wielder. The king again asked if he heard that only demons use dark magic. The head mage explained that demons can use all four elements and are just born with dark magic. Some demons also possess light magic. So, the king concluded that people are just scared of the unknown and because of her black hair. Yumiela realized the king was doing this for her sake and she was really grateful. Then the king asked how she reached level 99, a feat no one in history could achieve. She, with a neutral expression, casually said she didn't do anything special. After earning money from monsters in her territory, she bought an amulet of growth and killed monsters alone. She then played a monster calling flute and continued killing monsters until she reached level 99. This shocked everyone. The king asked Adolf if he could do the same, and he explained that only one amulet could be equipped at once. That's why he never removes his protection amulet, let alone faces a horde of high-level monsters alone. He couldn't believe how she did it at 10 years old. Once again, Yumiela realized she had said something she shouldn't have. Then the king said he wanted Yumiela to serve as a shield for the kingdom, and Yumiela politely accepted. The king wanted to reward Yumiela for her achievement and said he was even willing to accept her into the family. Yumiela realized the king wanted her to marry Prince Edwin so she couldn't run anywhere. She politely declined everything, saying the only thing she wanted was to live a peaceful life. The king agreed, and Yumiela thought that if the king annoyed her anymore, she would definitely run to another kingdom. Then she thought it was all over, but somehow she ended up in the queen's chamber. The queen explained that this was an unofficial meeting, and she didn't have to act formal. She said that the king and she had actually taken quite a liking to her, but all Yumiela wanted was to go home. Then the queen said Yumiela didn't want authority or any kind of power despite being so powerful and intelligent, and just the thought of her being more ambitious sent chills down her spine. Hearing this, Yumiela asked why the queen trusted her so much, and she explained that the person who didn't want to get involved in authority and royal affairs was the most trusted person. But then, with a serious face, she got to the point. She explained that in two years the demon lord would resurrect, and she wanted Yumiela's help when the time comes. Yumiela agreed, thinking she was already about to kill him, so it's no big deal. But then the queen explained that she was already preparing an elite force to kill the demon lord, and Yumiela realized she was talking about Alice and the boy. Then the queen explained that Yumiela would only have to assist and couldn't kill the demon lord herself. It was the duty of royalty to do it, and if she did it, the right to rule the kingdom would come under suspicion. Then she offered Yumiela to marry Prince Edwin, and the problem would be solved. But Yumiela immediately rejected the idea. She realized she had spoken out loud, not just in her mind. The queen laughed and said that's what she liked about her. Then the queen explained that right now the kingdom was divided into two factions, the kings and the anti-kings, which was ruled by the central wannabes who did nothing and left the matter to the government. In short, her dad, Yumiela explained not to worry, as she would not join her dad as she herself didn't like him. With that, the meeting finally ended. After that, she returned home, and Rita got the news of her being level 99 and was shocked. Then Rita handed an album of photos her dad sent for marriage, but Yumiela stared, ignored it, and handed a container full of royal sweets, saying the queen gave her and asked for some black tea, saying they should enjoy it together, which diverted the marriage topic and Rita ran for some tea. Meanwhile, the king and queen were talking about how they couldn't believe a 15-year-old is level 99, and because of her, they realized one can't go higher than level 99. Yumiela's level didn't increase anymore, meaning there is a level cap of 99. The queen sympathized with her, saying she had to become stronger from a young age because of her appearance and dark magic. Everyone bullied her, and even her family separated her, 
She was loved by no one and had no one to depend on, yet she holds no grudge against anyone and just wants to live peacefully. She wondered what would happen if someone would annoy the sleeping dragon and they would do everything to give her peace. From that day, things changed for Yumiella. Everyone started to talk more with her, saying they all thought Yumiella was scary, but she's actually a sweet person. It all happened because of the queen spreading good rumors about her, but Alice, for some reason, still got scared every time she sees her. The boys also apologized, probably because they got scolded by the king and their attitude remained the same. But like always, she didn't give a care. But her problem only got worse after that. One by one, each day, new princes from all over the kingdom started proposing to her, especially this overconfident virgin loser. Even after rejecting many times, he still comes every day and annoys her. He is from the anti-king side, desperate to win her over to their side. She once again brutally rejected him, saying she only likes men stronger than her, a tactic she learned after facing too many men, to which he explained that smart people don't need to be strong, and if they join hands, they can rule the kingdom. Annoyed, Eumelia asked if he was the top scorer in the school, and he explained that being smart doesn't have to mean getting high marks. For God's sake, someone just kill this fucking annoying guy, frustrated Eumelia said. So he is saying they can rule the kingdom, meaning to do that. He has to bring the royal family under him. Is he planning to kill the king? This thought panicked him, and Eumelia said she would keep this a secret if he never approached her again, which scared him, and he ran. Wow, such a smart guy. His smartness went into his ass. Then, annoyed as she was heading to her room, she met yet another annoying person, Eleonora, the only daughter of Duke and Valshine, and from an anti-king part. In the game, she was the one because of whom Yumiella turned evil when everyone was bullying her. She was the one who reached Yumiella and brainwashed her to do her evil deeds. She said she wanted to talk with Yumiella. Although she wanted to reject it, doing so would bring more trouble, so she accepted. Then she entered her room where they were having some girly talk. There, Yumiella thought, does she even know how to have girl talk? She realized she couldn't because she was a shut-in in the game and never talked with anyone much but she had her three legendary weapons. Whenever Eleonora said something, she simply replied with, I see, that's amazing, and tell me more. With only these three responses, she talked for hours with a bored face. After that, she finally came to the main point. She warned Yumiella to stay away from Prince Edwin as she liked him the most. She knew the king had offered her to marry him, and so had the queen. Yumiella thought that Alice was the one sticking to Edwin's side, so shouldn't she annoy Alice instead? Then Yumiella explained that she had already rejected the king's offer, and if there was something like this, the king would have already announced it. This made sense to her, but she still had her doubts. Then Yumiella threw yet another trump card, saying the only person suitable for Edwin is Eleonora, and they are a perfect match, which made her blush to death. She somehow got out of that situation. Later, as she was having lunch, some girls approached her and asked if they could have lunch together, and she agreed. Then Alice also came and sat with a worried and scared face. She asked Yumiella out of nowhere, is she the demon lord? Which shocked the entire class. This confused Yumiella, thinking, how did Alicia know the demon lord was returning? Yumiella played dumb, asking why she thinks so. Alicia explained that Edwin had told her that the demon lord would return in two years. Hearing this, Yumiella couldn't believe that the dickhead prince had exposed insider news to her like it was free candy. Then Yumiella asked if Edwin had said she is the demon lord, and hesitantly, Alicia said nope, it was her black hair, and stopped. Yumiella realized it was again because of her black hair and asked if the demon lord had long black hair. But just then, the idiotic boys came scolding Yumiella, saying why she is bullying Alicia. But she was like it was she who was getting accused of being the demon lord. To calm the situation, Yumiella said Alicia was just saying nonsense about the demon lord returning, so she was just denying it, thinking the demon lord's return needed to be kept a secret and thought Edwin should know this. But our piece of shit just confirmed that the demon lord is indeed returning, and dickhead William started shouting, so Yumiella is indeed the demon. This annoyed Yumiella to death. Yumiella said, if the demon lord is returning in two years, then what is she, her daughter? Hearing this, William didn't stop. In fact, he got more aggressive, saying he just knew she would do evil stuff in the future, so she needed to be punished. Yumiela got up with a terrifying aura, asking even if she did, would he be able to stop her? 
This sent chills down their spines and they went silent. She asked Oswald if he also thought she is the demon lord. He replied that if Alicia thinks she is, then she is. Yumiella realized a dickhead will always remain a dickhead to ease the situation and to prove she is on their side. She will reveal her secret to reach level 99. This caught everyone's attention and she said all they have to do is wear an amulet of protection, go to a dark type dungeon, use a demon calling flute and start killing monsters repeatedly. But they have to be alone for maximum benefits, and in no time they will reach level 99. As she was explaining everything, her head, eyes, everything was spinning. As Yumiella finished her speech, everyone was silent. She thought they were so happy that everyone was silent, but it was opposite. Edwin started shouting, saying did Yumiella wanted them to get killed? and left angrily. Yumiella thought it was too much for them and thought at least her classmates would appreciate her, but they started getting more scared of Yumiella, wondering if she was a psycho. Yumiella was thinking, why the hell is Alicia so wary of her? She was not like this in the original game. She wondered if Alicia was also a reincarnator like her who knows the game's story. Then Yumiella went into stalking mode. She started observing each and every move of Alicia and concluded, just like the game, she was a very innocent and kind girl. As Alicia was cuddling and playing with a cat, Yumiella was observing her from a tree, thinking that Alicia was not behaving in any strange way. It was just whenever she met her, she gave a scared look, which she didn't understand. While thinking, Alicia left from there and Yumiella immediately climbed down from the tree with sparkling eyes, saying before following Alicia, she had to do a very important thing, cuddle the cat. But as soon as the cat saw her, it ran like it saw a ghost which depressed Yumiella. She explained that ever since she reincarnated as Yumiella, animals got scared of her, and she didn't know why. Then she noticed a silver-haired kid watching her. She asked him if he saw everything, and he hesitated, saying no. But she knew he saw everything. So in her defense, she said that it was not that the cat ran away from her. She could have caught the cat, but she didn't want to use force. That's why she let the cat run away. With this weird explanation, she left, confusing the silver-haired boy. Then Yumiella started eavesdropping on Alicia and Edwin's conversation. Edwin asked Alicia why she thinks Yumiella is a demon lord. Her father said she uses dark magic at level 99, but she is not the demon lord. Then Alicia drew a messed up black drawing saying, this is how Yumiella looks from her perspective, terrifying and frightening, covered in a thick black aura. Alicia said that now she thinks it is because she has light magic and Yumiella is dark. There must be some reaction between them. Now Yumiella realized that was the reason animals are scared of her. This confirmed that Alicia was not reincarnated like her. The next day, she was called into the principal's office and got surprised when she saw a new guy. He introduced him as the new principal, appointed by the king. When Yumiella asked what happened to the old principal, he just smiled, saying he left the school on his own. But Yumiella knew he must have been fired because of what he did with her. Then the principal offered her tea, saying Prince Edwin and the boys were not this reckless before. And for that, he is really sorry. Yumiella wondered why they had become like that, and the principal said if she really didn't know. Well, they were always the top in everything from the beginning, when a certain someone came and shook their world. Yumiella realized he was talking about her but didn't say anything. The principal changed the topic, saying he called her to say about this, he have something important to talk. He wanted Yumiella to become a supervisor of all the nobles who would be going to a special training camp to level up to fight against the demon lord. Now that everything was disclosed, it was better to be prepared than try to convince it was a lie. The word special training sparked Yumiella's eyes, but the principal explained that Yumiella would only guard and not kill any monsters. He wanted everyone to reach level 40 until they graduate, but Yumiella wanted them to reach level 60 which surprised the principal. He said Captain Adolf was only level 60 at age 55, so how could they reach level 60 in two years? Then the next day, we see everyone in a group of 10 was killing a single monster at a time. Seeing this, she realized the monsters were so weak that if she took part in this, she might accidentally kill every monster in a blink. But after observing everyone, Yumiella concluded that there were very few monsters and many students were killing single monsters. It was overkill, and it would take ages to even raise a single level. She knew they were all nobles, and their safety was important, but it was like the teachers were pampering two-year-old kids, and she said it was too inefficient. At the same time, the silver-haired guy also said it was too inefficient, surprising Yumiella. She remembered him as the guy she met yesterday, and introduced himself as Patrick. Both of them agreed they were wasting their time. 
Patrick explained they could use military tactics where the vanguard would defend the rear and rangers would attack from behind, which would allow killing a large number of monsters. But what's the use when there are very few monsters? Yumiela realized that the experience points got split, meaning it was very hard to level up in a large group. That's why Captain Adolf was stuck at level 60. Yumiela got happy, thinking her leveling way was indeed correct. Then Yumiela said not to worry and took her whistle out and used it, saying, now they could level up fast, and a swarm of monsters started coming from the forest. Realizing Yumiela did something insane, Patrick immediately ran and started giving orders to the vanguard to come to position, and the rangers started to attack from behind, which allowed them to kill the monsters easily. When one monster attacked the vanguard, Patrick himself came to save him and killed the monster. After a while, everyone managed to kill all the monsters, but none got seriously injured. After everything calmed down, Patrick Furious came to Yumiela, asking how she could do it. Yumiela wondered why he was getting angry when she helped them level up fast. After some thinking, she concluded that the monsters she called must not be enough, so she said she would call even more powerful monsters. Even before Patrick could stop her, she once again blew the whistle. Observing the tired students with a dark, terrifying aura, Yumiela said not to worry, as she would hold the monsters for them. She raised her hand and creepy tentacles with hands from the ground grabbed the monsters' asses, causing them to fall on the ground, unable to move, which shocked everyone. Then Yumiela explained that she used her magic to freeze them, and now they could kill them easily. Worried, one student asked if the IT would not attack them, and Yumiela explained that the monsters were tightly trapped and couldn't even move, but he was asking about the creepy magic hand of Yumiela. Seeing this, Patrick killed one of the monsters, and the hands didn't do anything, and everyone started to say that the hands would not attack them. Yumiela realized they were not talking about the monster with her hands, and wondered if her hand was that creepy. Then Yumiela praised Patrick about his leadership skills, and he explained that, of course, he was good as he was the son of Margrave, the best commander in the kingdom. But just then, a hound attacked Yumiela, and Patrick came in between. Yumiela killed the hound with a single punch, but Patrick's hand got chewed down. Yumiela said not to worry and started healing the wound, but some weird-ass tentacles started licking Patrick's hand, which made him feel vomit, but his hand healed like it was new in no time. Patrick thanked Yumiela, and she curiously asked why Patrick jumped in front of her. He explained, of course, that he jumped to help her. She couldn't believe he jumped to help a level 99, but with a warm smile he said for Yumiela to take care of her health as it would be too late if she got heavily injured. Yumiela realized he really was worried for her, and well, boy oh boy, our girl got rizzed up by Patrick. Then Patrick requested Yumiela, please, to warm him before blowing the monster calling flute. So she immediately took the flute and said she is going to use it, and she immediately used the flute and everyone got devastated thinking they have to do it again. But it didn't stop there. Everyone played with Yumiela's creepy hands over and over again, the entire morning till evening. The next day, the principal gave Yumelia a warning for using the monster calling flute and was shocked to discover that dark magic could also heal wounds. Yumelia casually said she could even grow an arm back, which scared the principal a bit. He asked if she was speaking from personal experience. Even more casually, she explained that when she was a child, her shoulder got sliced up and she regrew it, which terrified him even more. However, he tried his best not to show it on his face. Yumelia thought that day, just for a bit, her head would have sliced off and she couldn't regrow her head. Then she wondered if she could regrow her head. Then, Yumelia asked if they could move on from her childhood stories. The principal explained that the three idiots probably wanted to show off in front of Alicia, so Alicia could not even get close to a monster. He wanted Yumelia to help Alicia level up. Hearing this, Yumelia got happy, thinking how she would throw Alicia into a dark dungeon crawling with demons to train her. But then the principal realized what she was thinking. She was planning to throw Alicia into some dangerous dungeon. He quickly corrected himself and asked Yumelia for help. He gave her a metal plate to test its endurance, saying it was specially made by the Magic Tower for armor, and even Captain Adolf couldn't make a dent in it. Before he could finish his words, Yumelia had already bent the metal plate like it was clay, leaving the principal speechless. Then we see the principal trying to bend the metal and he would not even make a dent on it. As she left the principal's office, she met Patrick, and she explained how she got scolded by the principal for using the demon flute. Patrick said it was to be expected. When Patrick's classmate called him, he left, saying he would meet Yumelia later, and he felt a little lonely after that. 
At swordsmanship class, no one dared to come close to Eumelia until today. But today, Patrick came to her, saying he wanted to be her sparring partner. When Eumelia asked if he was sure, as he had many friends to pair up with, he explained that it was because she healed him the other day, so he owed her this. Eumelia said he could have used a potion if she was not there. Patrick jokingly said that if that was the case, he would go spar with someone else. Eumelia said he indeed owed her, as the wound was too deep and a potion might not be enough. Patrick also mentioned that it was another thing that she was the reason he got injured in the first place, which left her depressed. Then the sparring began, and while sparring, she thought that Patrick became the first friend since she reincarnated into this world, and this feeling is not bad. Then Patrick jumped and attacked Eumelia, but she gently blocked the attack, and it was enough to send him flying miles. Panicked, Eumelia ran toward him, and Patrick started bleeding from his hand as it was broken. Eumelia first apologized, and then started healing him. Again, those weird tentacles started to suck and lick Patrick's hand, which sent chills down his spine. Hesitantly, he thanked her after getting healed. Curious, Patrick asked why Eumelia was learning swordsmanship when she was already so strong. She replied that she wanted to defeat the demon lord. Patrick asked if she believed the rumor about the Demon Lord's resurrection in two years, and she confidently said no, thinking it was just a rumor. She also mentioned that she believed Edwin was becoming more foolish every day, flirting and spending time with Alicia. Everyone started to believe Edwin was making up stories to impress Alicia. On the other hand, the rumor that Eumelia was the Demon Lord was still fresh. Then she asked Patrick if he also thought she was the Demon Lord. Patrick, with a warm smile, said that if she were the Demon Lord, the whole world would have already ended. He then began to tell a childhood story explaining that when he was a kid, his hair was grayish, so everyone started saying he was the Demon Lord. His life became miserable because of it. However, Eumelia interrupted, saying she thought Patrick's hair was pretty and that it was whitish. Patrick agreed, saying that compared to her beautiful black hair, his hair looked almost white. He admired Eumelia because she didn't hide her hair and walked with her head held high, ignoring everyone's mockery. This compliment made Eumelia blush, and she shyly thanked Patrick. She even flirted with him complimenting his hair as well. Then Eumelia asked for another sparring session, and Patrick agreed. But once again, just a slight flick sent Patrick flying, and Eumelia worriedly healed him. Everyone watched in horror as Patrick remarked that it's okay and Eumelia's healing magic is quite amazing. It was just a little gross. Eumelia said it was nothing, and it's all thanks to her dark magic attribute being overpowered. But Patrick said, nope, she is wrong, even if he had the dark attribute. He would have never been able to train and become so strong and show the dark magic openly to everyone. He would have hidden it from everyone, and for that reason he likes Eumelia. She is very daring and doesn't get scared to show everyone who she is. Then, at night, Eumelia went into deep thinking, pondering the original life of Eumelia. She wondered if, in the past, the original Eumelia had dark magic from birth and was hiding it from everyone, as Patrick had suggested. After being mocked, bullied, and experiencing jealousy from the heroes, all because she had black hair, she turned evil. Well, it didn't matter to her anymore, so she went to sleep. Then the next day, on the second field mission, Patrick warned Eumelia not to use the monster calling flute. She said she would not use it. After all, she had been scolded by the principal the other day. Today, she was only a medic. Although Patrick had his doubts, he chose to believe her. As their classmates started hunting monsters, Eumelia became too bored. She started playing rock, paper, scissors with her own shadow. When a student got injured, she immediately ran to heal him with potions. Tsunade, the teacher, told her she didn't have to do the manual work, but she explained that she had nothing else to do, so it was okay. Then she asked if they wanted potions or her healing magic. The students immediately chose potions, but Eumelia asked why waste potions when she could heal them. She started healing them with her tentacles, which creeped them out. She wondered why healers normally get good treatment, but why she was getting ignored. After a while, Eumelia was getting annoyed, seeing how slowly everyone was leveling up. So she tried to use her demon-calling flute, but Patrick stopped her, scolding her, and reminding her that he had told her not to use it. She explained that the students would not grow at all if they continued to get pampered like two-year-old kids. They had to face a little dangerous situation to grow stronger. When they would be facing the Demon Lord's army, would the Demon Lord sit and say, You all first complete your child's play, and I will watch and clap? This got Patrick thinking, but he said she couldn't force the students. Only when they agreed could she use the demon calling flute. So she got a brilliant idea. She said everyone had two choices. First, 
she could injure them, and after that everyone would get more serious after feeling pain for the first time. She was sure not to kill them and would control her strength or use the Demon Calling Flute. Well, the Demon Calling Flute won the vote by miles, and she immediately used the flute. Patrick paused for a moment and immediately went to command the student. Umelia realized she forgot to be polite. Then the monsters started to emerge, and Patrick started to command everyone on how to attack. Umelia realized Patrick is using his wind magic to carry his commands, and finally, after an incredible battle, everyone managed to kill every monster, all thanks to Patrick's commanding ability. As the battle got over, Umelia tried to say she is sorry, but every student circled around Patrick saying he is awesome, leaving Umelia all alone. She thought Patrick might have gotten angry with her, so with a sad feeling, she left the area, thinking about why she is feeling sad. In the past, she would have acted like this, but just then, from behind, Alicia called her and suddenly bowed down, saying she is really sorry for calling her a demon lord the other day, and she continued to apologize. Umelia noticed Alicia is trembling and realized it was too much to even stand near her dark magic, so she was about to say it's okay when the king of a piece of shit, Prince Edwin, came, saying Umelia to stay away from Alicia. He once again started accusing Eumelia, saying he knows she used a demon-calling flute to injure the students so that after healing them, she would get more popular. He may not be the demon lord, but she is nothing less than a demon lord, a pure evil person. As the prince continued to badmouth Eumelia, she went into deep thinking that she doesn't have any friends in the academy or in the world, and even if she left the country, the same would happen everywhere she goes. She wondered if there is even a place for her in the world. She was about to have a mental breakdown when Patrick came to defend Eumelia. Patrick explained that Eumelia indeed used the demon-calling flute, but she did it only because the students were slacking off. Although her method seemed wrong, her intention is not evil. After an intense staring competition, Edwin said he would be leaving for today, but his eyes would always be on Eumelia. Then Eumelia noticed Edwin getting a little angry, so she asked if Patrick was angry. He explained that although Edwin is a piece of shit, he can't get angry just because of him. Eumelia asked if Edwin was angry with her, and then she apologized for talking rudely on the field. Edwin explained that they are friends, and between them, they can talk casually. Hearing this, Eumelia let out a warm smile, which surprised Patrick, and he complimented that he had never seen Eumelia smile, but he liked it. Eumelia herself didn't realize she smiled and wanted to be friends with Patrick for a little longer. Then the next day, we see Yumiela and Patrick practicing sword fighting. He commented she is getting good at sword, but once again, she by mistake sent Patrick flying miles and immediately healed him with wound-sucking magic. But he said it's okay as he got used to her by now. Then Yumiela said sorry, as he had become her punching bag every day. But Patrick explained he is doing it willingly, which also helps his sword fight. Then Yumiela said she is also practicing to control her strength with this piece of metal, which only level 60 can bend, but she mistakenly broke it. Behind Patrick, he was also trying to bend it, but fails, and Yumiela thought she is far, far away to control her strength. In class, Yumiela explained, now not everyone is scared with her. We see two girls come asking for Yumiela's help in assignment because she was hanging out with Patrick, and seeing both of them sitting, they asked what are they doing together, thinking they might be dating. But Yumiela explained they are learning different ways to level up and enthusiastically asked if they also want to know how to level up and excitedly started lecturing how they can wear amulets of growth and use monster calling flute and kill monsters to level up. This creeped the girls out and Patrick said, why she always gets started like a parrot to everything how to level up with her unrealistic ways. But she said she herself did all this to grow stronger. Then we see Yumiela went to the library to find any book on how to control your strength, and there she met Alicia. She once again apologized on behalf of the piece of shit Edwin, and asked if Yumiela could help her with something. She explained that she wanted to learn from Yumiela how to use light magic. As light magic is so rare, no teachers in the school know in depth about light magic, and the same goes for dark magic. So she asked Yumiela how she learned her dark magic, and who taught her. Yumiela couldn't tell her she learned it from playing games, and although she knew all about light magic from the game, she also couldn't tell her how to use it for the same reason. Then Yumiela tried to teach her in a way that would look like Alicia herself came up with the magic spell. Yumiela asked Alicia what comes to her mind when she thinks about light, and Alicia, after thinking, said when she was little in her village, she used to watch stars with her grandma and got a little emotional, and immediately something clicked in her mind. She thanked Yumiela and went to her room, and Yumiela said Alicia is indeed the main character of the game as she catches things quickly. 
Evening came, and we see Patrick came to check if Yumiela once again done something crazy. Then they both went to eat some snacks, and Yumiela really enjoyed the vanilla-flavored cake. The two girls watching whispered, saying there is definitely something going on between them. The next day, Yumiela was reading the notice board that the annual competition was coming. There, a sword fight tournament is held as well as a magic showcasing competition, but she didn't want to participate as many powerful nobles would come to watch. It's a good chance for students aiming to join the military. Then Patrick also joined, saying he also didn't want to join the military, so he will also pass. He could have joined if the prize was good. Curious, Yumiela checked the prize. It was an amulet that enhances dark magic. She got shocked as it was an item she had no data of. And even before Patrick could say anything, she immediately ran to register the tournament. In the principal's office, she aggressively asked the principal to write her name. But seeing her so excited scared the principal a bit. But then he smiled wickedly, saying his bait worked. Finally, the deciding day came and Patrick said he heard the king gave the amulet to the principal to give it to her, but in the end they decided to offer it as a prize, meaning they baited Yumiela to participate in this tournament to showcase how powerful she is to other nobles. Then, Patrick said good luck and to do her best, but he stopped, telling her not to do her best, and please try to hold back and not to kill anyone. Then, Yumiela noticed William and Edwin were not in her block. Just then, William came excitedly, saying he trained the entire month and now is level 20. Yumiela, though, was this supposed to be impressive? Then William apologized to her, saying he heard from Captain Adolf that she is indeed level 99, and Captain Adolf can't lie, so it must be true. Yumiela forgave him. Then, William said his dream was to surpass Captain Adolf, so if he defeated her, that means he surpassed Captain Adolf. Yumiela thought, and he is actually getting closer to his own grave. The sword tournament begins, and finally it was Yumiela's turn, and everyone's eyes glued to her. She reached the stage, knowing she would win for sure. So, she decided to hold back drastically, just like she practiced, so that her opponent would get the chance to showcase his strength. She didn't want to ruin anyone's life, but the only problem was whenever she tried to swing her sword, it broke, and if swords break, one will get disqualified in the tournament. So, she only used 0.1% of her strength, which created waves of wind, enough to scare her opponent, and he immediately surrendered, leaving her confused. But it was not the end. One by one, every opponent surrendered, as they didn't want to be sent flying into space. And just like that, she reached into the final. In the other block, William and Edwin were fighting. But William easily won because of his fat-ass magic sword, which is a national-class treasure that Captain Adolf uses. William tells Yumiela that now that he has this sword, he will kick her ass, and the fight began. William continued to swing his sword, and Yumiela dodged like it was nothing, thinking how did William get his hand on a sword which only comes at the endgame. But William started to get tired after a few swings, and Yumiela said, This is what happens when you use a weapon higher than one's level. William got frustrated, saying to fight like a warrior and not to dodge the attack. So she decided to exchange some blows, but as soon as their swords clashed, her sword started to crack. Panicked, she thought she would get disqualified. In a single punch, she broke the legendary sword. The punch was so fast, it felt like Yumiela's dull sword broke his sword, and he can't believe how it happened. But Captain Adolf realized what happened and got depressed, seeing his sword shattered into pieces. Just like that, Yumiela won, and the magic tournament began. Yumiela explained that one has to show how well they control, accuracy, and mastery they have in their magic. Just then, Oswald came, and he also apologized for doubting her, but also said, even though she was not lying about her level, it doesn't change the fact that he don't like her. Then he challenged Yumiela, saying he will win this round, as although Yumiela might be level 99, but this tournament is not about power. He has absolute control over all four elements, and he will achieve his dream to become the top mage, and his first step is to win this tournament. And then he left. Then it was Alicia's turn. She closed her eyes, and some glittery starlight particles started to fall from the sky, instantly healing everyone's health. Yumiela realized this was a spell Alicia learned at the end game, and she learned it with just a hint. She was indeed the heroine of the story. Alicia got 88 points a and she herself got shocked. She never thought she would do something like this and thanked Yumiela in her mind. Then it was William's turn, and he created a tornado of fire and got 90 points, while Yumiela continued to think how to score a high score. And lastly, it was Oswald's turn. With a majestic look, he created a huge earth cube, then shattered it into small cubes. 
surprising everyone. Then he used fire and water magic at the same time and combined them both with wind magic, creating an ultimate attack showcasing his mastery, accuracy, and control on all the elements which Yumiela also seeing recognized, saying he is called a genius for a reason. As he was done using his spell, everything started to cheer, and he got a perfect 100 points. He majestically walked toward Yumiela, saying he got a perfect 100 points, and there is no way she can win now. Yumiela said if she also scores 100, it will be a draw and left, while Oswald gave a smile. As she walked, she was wondering how in the God's name can she get 100 points. Just then, Yumiela noticed Patrick standing far and thought, why is he standing so far, and gave a creepy smile, thinking now she knows what to do. She will use a spell that even Patrick will be able to see from this far, and seeing she creepy smile. He realized Yumiela is going to do something crazy and ran to stop her, but it was too late. Yumiela said, fuck control, she will use her strongest spell with 5% of her power. She raised her hand and used black hole and a gigantic hole appeared, covering the entire city sucking everything in. But it was not the end. After that, a huge tornado came, which was an after effect of using her 5% of power, and everyone got terrified and panicked, saying they will die here. But Yumiela, well, she was thinking which spell to use next to impress the judge. Just then, the judge came running toward her, saying to stop. Yumiela said she has one more spell to use, but the judge gave her 300 points, confusing her. She asked, didn't the max points was 100, but the judge said not to worry and take the 300 points and stop her spell. Just like that, she won the tournament and got her Amulet of Darkness. Outside, Angry Patrick asked, was it really necessary to go that far for this trashy prize? And Yumiela was thinking maybe she should see how stronger this amulet makes her dark magic, creeping him out. From the next day, once again everyone started to fear Yumiela. Only Patrick was the one who sat next to her and talked. But there was one more person, Edwin, the piece of shit. He came charging at Yumiela, asking if she is the one who is stealing Alicia's things. Hearing this, Patrick got furious, asking why the hell Edwin always keeps finding new ways to bully Yumiela. Edwin casually replied that Yumiela is nothing special, and he is asking every student the same question and left. Confused, Patrick asked if Edwin would not ask him, and Edwin replied, he knows Patrick is not the type to do this, leaving Patrick more annoyed as it means Edwin indeed only came specially to Yumiela, not everyone. Meanwhile, Yumiela was thinking. According to the original story, it was indeed Yumiela who bullied Alicia, but now she didn't have any reason to do so. The thought of catching the real culprit once again kicked her inner gamer. Afternoon came, and we see a student stealing Alicia's book. A voice scared her to death. Panicked, she tried to turn, saying she's not there to steal, but there was no one to be seen. As she looked up, Yumiela was sticking up on the ceiling like a lizard, scaring the student to her deepest core. As Yumiela came close to her, she started to cry, begging Yumiela not to kill her. Meanwhile, she was thinking, what kind of demon does every student think she is? She continued to cry, saying it was Miss Eleonora who sent her to this. Yumiela immediately went to Eleonora, and she explained to her that she knows how badly Eleonora wants to clap Edwin. But what she is doing might backfire. What if Edwin found out about this, and then he will start to hate Eleonora? This made her worried, but Yumiela explained not to get jealous with Alicia. As she is a commoner, she can't get married with Edwin, so all she has to do is to keep a kind and good image with Edwin. This made Eleonora very happy and excited. But Yumiela thought, although in-game, Alicia in fact got married after she killed her, and the Demon King granted Alicia nobility. But a small lie is okay to maintain peace. Then, after hearing the entire story, Patrick got angry, asking why Yumiela didn't say the truth to Edwin, as Edwin still believes Yumiela was the one who was stealing. But with a sad tone, Yumiela explained that after seeing this girl, she saw herself in that girl. She said, what if she didn't level up to 99 and hid the face she is a dark mage? Then for sure, she would be the one Eleonora would have ordered because she would be the weakest student. And after getting caught, everyone would have bullied her more. Alicia is a light mage, loved by everyone, and she is a dark mage, hated by everyone. To take revenge, she would have leveled up and tried to destroy the kingdom. And as a light mage dominated dark, so Alicia might have killed her. As Yumiela was saying this, Patrick was listening with a serious face. And Yumiela thought, if this is what happened with the original Yumiela, she understands why she turned evil. Well, she was not born evil. Society made her one. Hearing this, Patrick got sentimental, saying the only difference between the real Yumiela and her story 
was her level. Then, with a serious face, Patrick stood up, trying to show she is not alone. She has him, her friend, by her side. But before he could finish his sentence, Yumiela spoke, saying yes. She is very glad that she has Patrick, at least she has someone to talk to, and left, thinking just getting a conversation with Patrick is enough, and wondered if she ever will be able to make a friend. But from the next day, something unexpected happened. Eleonora started stalking Yumiela continuously, trying to act friendly with her and inviting her to tea. Despite rejecting her every time, Eleonora continued to stalk her. Well, she wanted to go and talk, but Eleonora is the daughter of the anti-king faction Duke Hillrose, and she was an evil character in the original story. But after getting stalked relentlessly, she agreed to attend the tea party, determined to make Eleonora hate her so that she will stop stalking her. Then Eleonora offered Yumiela a cookie, saying she made it herself, and Yumiela, to offend her, said it was the most disgusting cookie she ate in her life. But instead of getting angry, Eleonora became happy, saying the cookie was indeed disgusting. But all her followers and friends said it was very delicious because she was the Duchess's daughter, and only Yumiela treats her like an ordinary girl and shares her honest thoughts, leaving Yumiela confused. Then, to make Eleonora hate Yumiela more, Yumiela said she is the worst baker, is not suitable for baking, and this once again made Eleonora happy, saying once again, Yumiela is right, and she indeed a very bad cook. She started praising Yumiela, saying that they will become best friends in the future. Now at this point, Yumiela realized this girl is very naive and dumb, and definitely someone is manipulating her. To confirm, Yumiela asked Eleonora if she was the one who was bullying Alicia, and hesitantly, Eleonora replied she wasn't the one who ordered the girl. Yumiela realized Eleonora indeed gave the final order. That means her friends must have manipulated her. And yes, Eleonora confessed that when her friend insisted on bullying Alicia, she couldn't say no because she feared losing her friends if she didn't listen to her. Once again, Yumiela felt like Eleonora was also like her in her own way. So she agreed to become Eleonora's friend, which made her very, very happy. But then Eleonora became more obsessed with Yumiela. She started following Yumiela everywhere, even to her house, and started having tea parties at her place. Well, at first she was annoyed, but deep down she knew Eleonora became her first genuine friend. When Yumiela shared her recent story with Patrick, he became happy for her first friend, but was also sad, as he wanted to say Yumiela also had one more friend, which is he. But well, he was a single, virgin loser, so he wouldn't gather the courage to say it. Then Patrick asked Yumiela if she would attend the annual party. But Yumiela said she was not interested and left, thinking even if she attended, she would have no one to dance with. But after Eleonora heard she was not attending, she, like a tape recorder, annoyed Yumiela to death and insisted her to attend, saying if no one danced with her, she would become her partner. But Yumiela tried to reject her offer by showing she didn't have any dress to wear. Just then, a parcel came to her house, which was from the queen. Night came and the party began, and suddenly everyone's gaze turned towards someone with amazement, and it was none other than Yumiela. She was wearing a hot red dress, and seeing this, Patrick's dick got melted. Shit. I meant to say Patrick's heart got melted. Seeing this, Eleonora left both of them alone, saying to enjoy, leaving Yumiela confused, thinking Patrick only thinks of her as a sparring partner, nothing more. Now alone, Patrick noticed Yumiela indeed had some great melons, and Yumiela also started feeling embarrassed, thinking she never wore something this revealing. Just then, Patrick asked Yumiela out for a dance. Hesitant, Yumiela agreed to do so, and as they started dancing, everyone started to glare at them. Yumiela thought she was looking too ugly, so everyone was glaring at her, but Patrick said actually it was the opposite and embarrassingly said she was looking very gorgeous and beautiful in this dress, leaving her blushing. Her hands started to sweat, and as the song finished, everyone started to clap, and Yumiela backed away, wiping her sweaty hand. But Patrick thought Yumiela didn't like dancing with her. Just then, the next round of the song was about to begin, and Patrick was about to ask Yumiela out for the next dance when a dickhead came, also asking Yumiela for a dance. But Yumiela, like always, replied, showing her fist, that she will only dance with someone stronger than her, scaring the man. Little did she know, Patrick got depressed, thinking Yumiela will only dance with men stronger than her, so he didn't have a chance with her from the start. So Patrick never got the courage to ask Yumiela for one more round, and from the next day, he didn't come to school. In the dungeon, he solo started to level up to become a strong Sigma male, determined to make his little PP strong so that Yumiela can accept her. Meanwhile, at school, a girl named Jessica came to Yumiela for help. 
Well, her village was getting attacked by a huge ass dragon, and everyone was dying. Her village asked for help in the capital, but it would take at least three days for the knights to come. But by then, her village would get destroyed, so she requested Yumiela for help. Well, Yumiela explained. In the original story, this girl and Alicia became good friends, and Alicia was the one who helped kill the dragon. But Yumiela must have changed the storyline somehow, so Yumiela agreed to help. They finally reached her town, but her maid was very scared with Yumiela. Her father welcomed Yumiela, saying Jessica said in the letter that Yumiela was like a demon lord. This angered Jessica, and she corrected, saying she didn't say Yumiela is like a demon lord. She said Yumiela is stronger than a demon lord. Her father got surprised, saying how can a beautiful, delicate lady be so strong? And this made Yumiela blush a little after a long time. Finally, Yumiela went into the forest with two guards that Jessica's father assigned. Well, they were not very happy, murmuring why they have to come here with this rich, weak-looking lady and follow her command and how it is too annoying. But suddenly, Yumiela stopped. The guards thought Yumiela got tired, but she stopped because the dragon was here. Scared, both the guards ran to save their lives. Hiding beside a rock, they started screaming for Yumiela also to hide and save her ass. But suddenly, the dragon attacked Yumiela with a strong fire breath, scaring the guards more. But it didn't even scratch Yumiela. She used 0.01% of her power and activated her small black hole, which instantly sucked the red dragon inside her, and a huge mana stone fell. The guards started to celebrate their victory, amazed at how a weak-looking girl is insanely strong. But it was not the end. In the game, after Alicia with her dickhead boys killed this dragon in the original story, another came. And yes, a green, even more strong wind dragon came. But Yumiela activated her shadow lance and instantly killed him, like crushing an ant by mistake. Then Yumiela went inside the cave of the dragon to collect their egg. Well, in the original story, it was Alicia and the boys who found this nest. Finally, the new semester began, and Patrick was confident as he leveled up and became stronger. But he got surprised seeing a big black egg in Yumiela's hand. When he asked, Yumiela with a warm smile replied, This is her child. Patrick got confused and asked her to explain herself. Yumiela said she laid this egg, and this is her child. Patrick got more panicked, holding Yumiela. He started to shout, asking who is the father. Well, it was a joke, and Yumiela wondered if Patrick really believed she can lay eggs. Then Yumiela explained that she got permission from the principal to raise this dragon and thought in the original story Alicia's magic caused the egg to hatch a light attribute dragon. Her main objective was to get a huge dragon so that she can flee this country if something happens, and calling this egg her child was not entirely wrong. As one has to give the egg their mana to hatch, the more powerful the mana is, the more powerful the dragon will hatch. At first, she thought this dragon was like her personal flying taxi, but after giving her mana every day, this dragon felt like her child. Just then, Alicia passed by but got terrified seeing Yumiela. She was looking like a psycho butcher holding a demonic monster ready to destroy the world and ran. Yumiela said to Patrick to look at the egg, how lovable this is, which confused Patrick, thinking how this thing is lovable. And Yumiela continued, saying she will make her kid the strongest dragon that existed in the world, which scared Patrick even more. Just then, the egg started to move, which excited Yumiela. She immediately ran to her dorm, even inviting Patrick. Well, he was just too stiff and shy because it was the first time he entered a girl's room. But once again, the egg started to move, making Yumiela more excited. The maid was also scared, and Yumiela, well, she was becoming restless, continuously tapping the egg, saying it to hatch. Just then, the egg cracked, and hyper-excited Yumiela grabbed Patrick's shoulder, causing his bone to crack. He was in pain, but Yumiela was just too indulged in her egg. Finally, a black small claw emerged from the egg, and Patrick, well, he was crying for help, but Yumiela was too excited to listen. Yumiela asked Patrick to cheer her baby up, saying to do his best, and poor Patrick, even in pain, started cheering for her baby. Finally, the whole egg cracked, and a black dragon with horns and big eyes emerged. Seeing it, both the maid and Patrick got scared. Patrick got a little sad, saying he knew Yumiela wanted a cute dragon, but it turned out to be a scary one. But before he could finish his sentence, Yumiela spoke with admiration. For Yumiela, it was the cutest dragon she saw, as the dragon really resembled her. She hugged the baby dragon, making Patrick more confused, thinking how this thing can be cute. After that, Yumiela gave her kid the name Ryu, which was the name of the legendary dragon. The baby dragon liked it very much and happily growled, and dark flame came from his mouth. But Yumiela, like it was normal, shook it away, 
saying not to release his breath indoors. In response, Ryu blinked his eyes, and a laser beam came from his eyes, making holes in the room. Well, at this point, the maid and Patrick were too terrified, so Patrick left for his room, thinking he will definitely die if he remains here, saying only Yumiela can handle a dragon like this. At night, Yumiela slept with Ryu, hugging him like a baby, telling him to suck her mana up and grow healthy. But when morning came, the maid got terrified because Ryu had sucked too much of Yumiela's mana and had grown too much. Yumiela got ready and for the first time took Ryu out. While patting his head, she said he is the cutest and most adorable dragon she saw. And Ryu was also very happy. But as the other students saw Ryu, they got terrified, screaming that a dragon came to attack their school. Patrick came bewildered, saying how the hell Ryu grew so much overnight. Yumiela tried to tell everyone that Ryu is harmless and asked Ryu to play with the students, but the students felt like peeing their pants in fear and started running. So Yumiela concluded these students must not like animal. Just then, Ryu came and grabbed Patrick's head with his mouth. Yumiela was jealous, saying she also wanted Ryu to love her like this. As Ryu released Patrick, his white thing was all over Patrick's face, and well, he was just glad to be lucky to even be alive. Just then, furious, Edwin also came, saying now what kind of evil plan Yumiela is cooking. Yumiela tried to explain Ryu is her kid, and even the principal gave permission, but Ryu midway also grabbed Edwin's head. Alicia, worried, ran to help him, and with Yumiela's command, he released Edwin, and he left, cursing Yumiela, saying she will have to pay for this humiliation. Then Yumiela questioned why no one seems to like animals here, but Patrick said this was not any normal animal. Just then, Eleonora also came and with admiration started patting Ryu, saying he really is cute. Yumiela was glad at least someone genuinely also thinks that Ryu is cute. And well, she also got the same treatment and Ryu covered her with his white sticky thing. From that day, Yumiela kept Ryu in his separate stable, which was specially made for him as he had grown too big to keep in the house. The next day, while walking, Patrick stopped Yumiela. He was very panicked, saying he really had something important to say. Yumiela also got a little panicked, saying she also had something important to say, making Patrick shy. Yumiela continued, saying depending on how things will turn out, it would be either fun and pleasurable or a painful experience. Patrick's cheeks turned red, and Yumiela said she wanted to ride Ryu and fly high, and wanted Patrick to accompany her. This left Patrick's mind destroyed, thinking he didn't want to ride Ryu, he wanted to ride Yumiela. They finally reached near Ryu, and once again, Patrick got shocked seeing how huge Ryu had gotten. Then Yumiela explained she also placed that ring given by the king, indicating this dragon is owned by their kingdom so that it will not be treated as wild. Now, seeing this huge dragon, Patrick said he will ride Ryu the next time, as his stomach is acting a bit strange. So Yumiela alone rode on top of the dragon, as she can't use wind magic, so she can't fly on her own. It was the first time she flew into the sky, and it was a truly wonderful experience. But we can't say the same for the townspeople. They got too terrified, and chaos turned the city upside down seeing the dragon. Then Ryu gave a backflip, and Yumiela lost her balance and started to fall. Since she can't fly, she used her dark flame as a propeller and changed her direction, falling on the school's training ground, making a huge hole. Patrick came running, worried to death, and held Yumiela in his arms. He was too panicked, saying to hurry to go to the nurse's office. But Yumiela explained she can't get injured with just this much damage. But Patrick said he knows, and even though Yumiela is strong, she has to be more careful. For the first time, Yumiela realized Patrick really cares for her. The next day, Yumiela went to the city to buy a saddle so that she will not fall the next time. When a mysterious figure came behind her saying to remain calm, he introduced himself as spy from the kingdom of Remlist and he wanted to talk with Yumiela in private. The next moment, we see the spy and Yumiela sitting in a room. The man introduced himself as Linus, a spy from the neighboring country. Hearing this, Yumiela remembered Patrick's hometown is also on the border of both countries, and both countries don't get along. So she wondered what could a spy from that country want from her. Linus finally revealed what he wants from Yumiela. He explained politely, with a sigh, that after doing his research, he found out that Yumiela is indeed level 99 and unimaginably strong. She doesn't want power, wealth, or anything. She only likes to live an ordinary life. But after she hatched an ender dragon, his king climbs on his ass every day, insisting him to go and ask Yumiela to join them in their country. So, after hearing this, Yumiela politely rejected his offer, thinking if a war happens, it will also affect Patrick's hometown, and she doesn't want to be involved in that. Linus sighed, saying it's okay, but curiously, he asked, according to him, 
Everyone in this country just treats her like trash because of her black hair. So what is stopping her from leaving this country? Yumiela, hearing this, the first thing that came to her mind was Patrick's face. But she replied, she wants to kill the demon lord that will destroy the world. But before she could finish her sentence, she sensed someone and informed Linus to run, saying the king must have sent someone to keep an eye on her. And yes, guards started to surround the cafe, so Linus wore a hoodie and ran, saying thanks to Yumiella. As the guards reached the room, Yumiella had already left the room. Now, while returning, she wouldn't buy the saddle, but she was in deep thought, saying initially her plan was indeed to flee to another country if things had gotten out of hand. But now, for some reason, she got attached to this kingdom, and that day she realized it was because of Patrick. The next day, while patting Ryu, Yumiella hesitantly wanted to ask Patrick something, but being a shut-in loser, could not say it directly that she wanted to be friends with Patrick. She started telling a story about a lonely girl who got bullied and how a kind man started to come and talk with that lonely girl. Although their relationship was nothing but sparring partners, that lonely girl wanted to become friends with that kind man, and that girl was none other than Yumiella. Well, hearing this, Patrick got confused for a moment and said, isn't it that they already are friends? As Patrick thought Yumiella was his friend, this made Yumiella more confused, thinking there was no way Patrick thought of her as a friend. She thought maybe Patrick wanted Yumiella as a valuable combat asset, so he was kind towards her. But Patrick explained, does she really think Patrick is like that? From the first day he met Yumiella, he just wanted to ride her. Hearing this, Yumiella's ass, Yumiella's heart started to tickle, and she felt a little relief and got happy. Then, while returning to their rooms, Yumiella, a little excited, asked Patrick that she wanted to ride Ryu and fly high, and asked Patrick to join her. But Patrick refused her offer, saying he needed to go somewhere important. This made Yumiella a little sad, noticing Patrick going somewhere every day after school. But before she could finish her sentence, Eleonora came running, calling Yumiella's name, and Patrick, seeing the chance, left, saying, Yumiella, good luck taking care of Eleonora, her dear friend. As Yumiella got busy with Eleonora, we see Patrick wearing the Amulet of Growth came to a dungeon. Even the guards, seeing Patrick, advised him not to over-level up. Patrick seemed to be leveling up hardcore, as his mind is really set to make his little PP strong so that he can ride Yumiella. Inside the dungeon while killing goblins, he wondered Yumiella is also a human just like him. A normal 16-year-old girl. Wait, what? She is 16! What the f***? So if Yumiella can become strong, he can also become strong. Evening came and we see Patrick returning to school, all injured and messed up. Yumiella, seeing Patrick like this, said she just figured out where Patrick had been going secretly. This left Patrick a little shy, but Yumiella revealed Patrick must be going to meet his girlfriend every day secretly, right? And insisted she wanted to meet her. This left Patrick shocked, asking what does Yumiella think? While meeting a girl, how in the God's name can he get this messed up? He strongly explained he is single, virgin, loser, and doesn't have a girlfriend. So Yumiella asked where Patrick had been going secretly. Patrick couldn't tell her he is leveling up to ride her. But just then, Ryu got hungry. So Yumiella left to feed Ryu, saying goodbye to Patrick. Just then, Edwin came from behind, saying, Patrick, he saw and heard everything from afar. And just like Patrick said, Yumiella is not a bad girl. She is just a little strange and weird. While flying, Yumiella got into deep thinking, saying if Patrick doesn't have a girlfriend, then where is he going secretly every day? At first, she thought Patrick had a girlfriend, but after hearing he is single and a virgin, she really felt happy but wondered, will she ever be able to get into a romantic relationship with Patrick? The next day, we see Patrick coming to Yumiella, saying he has a very important thing to say and to follow him. Yumiella did, and they came to a room where Edwin was sitting, ready for a threesome. Patrick left, and Edwin, with a sorry face, first apologized, saying he is really sorry for bullying and humiliating Yumiella in front of everyone again and again. Even though his father explained to him that she is not the demon lord, he just was not able to accept the fact that Yumiella can be stronger than him. He knew from inside Yumiella is a human just like him, and is of the same age, so how she can be stronger than him? His ego got the better of him. Yumiella, hearing this, said she can forgive Edwin. She thought everyone in the academy is, after all, all kids, and she herself believes her whole existence is a bit strange for normal people. Hearing this, Edwin smiled, saying, Yumiella is just like what Patrick said and asked if Yumiella had any requests. She can tell him as a token of apology. He will fulfill it. 
So Yumiela just asked to take part in the demon subjugation, nothing more. But then curious, Yumiela thought in the original story Edwin never had a heart change like this, so she asked Edwin why now he came for an apology and not before. So Edwin explained it was because of Patrick. He every day, like a tape recorder, used to explain to him that Yumiela is not a bad girl. And after observing Yumiela himself, Edwin realized Patrick was right. Then, as Edwin left, and the principal came asking how was the talk with Edwin went. And then Yumiela explained everything, how Edwin apologized, and everything. The vice principal explained Edwin and the boys are not bad boys. They were just not able to accept the fact that there can be someone stronger than them at the same age, so they acted like that. Then the principal came to the main point, explaining that Edwin, William, and Oswald seemed to be leveling up like crazy to beat Yumiela, but it was not the case for Alicia. Just like before, whenever Alicia came into any danger before she could overcome it and level up, the boys always saved her and pampered her like a two-year-old kid. So Alicia is still very low level and asked Yumiela for help leveling up Alicia, and she agreed and came walking where Alicia was practicing her light magic, targeting a tree. Oh. Well, Alicia was missing the target very badly, and Yumiela, seeing this, realized if things remain like this, she will end up killing the demon lord, and the king will make her marry that piece of shit, Edwin. So Yumiela approached Alicia to train her, but seeing Yumiela, Alicia once again got scared because of Yumiela's terrifying aura. Yumiela insisted on training Alicia by going inside a dark-type dungeon she knew, but Alicia, after imagining herself with Yumiela in the dungeon, realized if she went, she would definitely die. So she made a dumb excuse that she needed to pee and she ran, leaving Yumiela confused. Well, the next day, something unexpected happened. Alicia went missing again. And once again, the dickhead William charged at Yumiela, accusing her of doing something to Alicia. But this time, Edwin came to Yumiela's defense, saying she can't do something like this. Meanwhile, Alicia, with an expressionless face, was going deep into the forest. 